welcome back. So I've just finished the uh, siding on the old abandoned mobile home here. And if you want to see how that came together, stick around. All right, so I'm ready to get going on the siding here. It was a lot of work to get to this point. You know, I had to fix uh, a bunch of rotten wood back along the way there. But uh, you can see now I've got my soffits are installed, my fascias are installed. Um, you know, I've got my my board, my trim board on around where the skirting is. The skirting's installed. So uh, my window tr windows are all trimmed out. So now I'm ready to put the siding on. So, you know, the process is kind of, you know, I, I uh, did all the bottom work okay for the siding to come down to and i've got a level line established with that uh that one by eight board there above the skirting and then i uh you know after i did the new roof then i put the uh, soffits in there and so now the soffits will go up to that uh, metal soffit and uh, sorry the siding will go up to the metal soffit and uh, that's so that'll be finished so now we just have to kind of fill it in between the bottom and the top and uh, we're going to be using a, a vinyl siding on this on this home. Um, in the mobile home parks, they kind of like us to have maintenance-free products, so uh, we'll be using a vinyl. We're going to use a D5D, which is a, a it's a Dutch lap siding, something just readily available to us here at uh, our local home Home Depot. And uh, yeah, so you know, around the trims, around the windows, you know, it's all done. I've got my two coats of paint on there so I don't have to paint anything after I get the siding on uh, my, I'm fitting my siding onto the uh, up against finished product there so now you can see how we've uh, prepared how we've prepared along the way uh, getting to this point so you know we when we did this board we put this uh, paper uh, to go down behind that board so that if any water gets in there, it's going to protect the uh, the wood. And uh, so next up now, I'm going to be installing a flashing that's going to come over top of this, and then our sheathing is going to come down over top of that. Our uh, not our sheathing, but our house wrap. And so uh, I'll I'll show you how that as I go along here. Um, you know, same on the windows. You know, before we put our trim on, we put that tar paper. That tar paper all goes underneath the windows, and now we'll start to overlap sort of like shingles here to so it sheds water and uh, again I'll show you how that all works got all of the old uh, metal siding is all off all right so uh, yeah just new stuff from here on in now I also painted that I also painted that two by four sub fascia up there now that is going to get covered up by a uh, five inch fascia gutter. You're not going to see that. You're also not going to see that edge of the uh, soffit there. The uh, gutters are going to hang down about an inch past the bottom of the uh, soffit. Uh, when we get to that point, we want to get our siding on first before we do our, before we do our uh, gutters because you know there'll be down pipes coming down. So we want to have those put onto the finished siding. So as soon as I get the siding on, then I'll get the, the uh, guys to come out and put the gutters on. But I painted that, I painted that black, and that's a lesson that I've learned. Um, because of the slope of the uh, eaves troughs, um, if you don't paint that, if you don't black it out, you can see it actually, you can see some raw wood because of the slope of the gutters. And uh, on this particular home, because of the, uh, you can see the bank up there and the street goes up that way. So when you're up there on the street, you can actually look down and you'll see it. So, uh, yeah, just one of those little details that, uh, you know, makes a difference between kind of an amateur job and a, and a professional job. All right, so you can see this is already all that old uh, trailer siding is gone, the old tin stuff. Um, this is going to be a, a, a big... Uh, all of a sudden, this is going to be done. It's going to be just look. It's going to change the look of this right real fast. Okay. So you can just see all my tar paper that I've been doing as I go along. 
And uh, yeah, I'll just take you up here and show you how what I'm talking about. So, you know, from this vantage point on the street, you know, you can look sort of down, especially as you get over here. So if I hadn't painted that board black, especially like here, you're gonna look down and you'll see the raw wood. So now I'm gonna have the black gutter and I've done the black behind it on that subfascia. And so that's, uh, you know, it's all gonna be black. All right, folks, so uh, now I'm just gonna get set up here and I'll start. First thing I gotta do is put the flashing on the top of that board. That's the first thing, so it'll be the flashing. And then I'll install my corners. And uh, then I'll put my uh, Tyvek, I'm doing Tyvek house wrap on this. And that'll be next. And then kind of the order is uh, after that's on, then I do the J trimmer on the windows, get all my windows prepped, and then I start laying siding on. So yeah, we're coming along. It's getting late in the year. Here it's early fall. And uh, I want to get this done here before before we get some cold weather. All right, so the first step in my siding job here is to get this um, flashing installed over my, over this, over this board here. And so uh, this is just uh, pre-finished, it's white. Um, it, the size of it is an inch and a quarter uh, that comes out over my board here. And then it comes up the wall. And so you can see how, um, you know, it creates a seal here where that board meets the, this board meets the wall here. So that joint in there is sealed now. And it's uh, sloped slightly to uh, shed water and it has this drip edge here so the water will drip off and not run back in. So now when I put the uh, sheathing on, or sorry, the, I keep saying sheathing here, but the uh, Tyvek house rep, it will come down over top of this. And so that creates uh, a stepped layer like shingles. So any water that will come down, that would get come down on the face of that Tyvek paper is gonna come down and land on this and then come out. And so this is how you make that joint water, watertight. So um, it's 10 foot sections. So every 10 feet I have a joint. So you can see here, um, I overlapped it an inch and a half. And you can see I ran a bead of caulking in there. So there's a bead of caulking in there. But before I uh, put them together, I just smush it in there and that seals that joint. And I'm just using uh, inch and a quarter galvanized roofing nails to nail that on with. You want to use something that's not going to rust. And uh, at the corner, this is how I've done the corners. I just miter the corner. So what I've done is I let this uh, this piece go underneath this piece, and it's just goes under there a quarter of an inch, and you can kind of see it there. So we get a bit of an overlap. Again, I caulk I caulk this joint before I put this piece in. So there's caulking in behind there and down here, and that just seals that joint there. So I'm gonna tell you a little trick here. Um, when you install when you install flashings or anything like that where that overlaps like this um, you can see when you, if you look down from this way if you look down you can see the end of the flashing right so you can see this next one down here all right and that's just what happens when you overlap stuff okay same thing here okay so a little trick is to overlap it from your line of sight so you're going to walk up from the front of the house and look down the home this way so if you look at it this way you'll notice you don't see any of those those we're not looking into the end of that flashing all right so that's just a little trick to make it look more pro um, and you just organize yourself like that so that you start at the end away from your line of sight you put your first piece and then you overlap as you go along okay and so you know my line of sight being you know if you walk up to the front of the home here you're going to look down you're going to look down that 
length of flashing and you don't see those joints you know they're not as obvious that way and so here at the front again uh, you can see i just miter these corners on the flashing all right I've got an inside miter there and again i let this their overlap overlap underneath here so there it sheds water it doesn't you know it comes back a quarter of an inch underneath this one and then it's, again you can see there i've got caulking in there so this is a little bit technical when you get these inside and outside um, flashings all together. But here again, you know, looking down, looking down, this is the line of sight from the side of home, from the front of the home. So, you know, as we're looking down here, you can see we, we, we don't notice those joints, you know, because we're not looking at the butt end of them. As opposed to looking at it this way all right then you kind of look into them you can see there we're looking into it right there all right okay so the next uh now i've got that all installed all the way around so my next thing is going to be to uh get my corners in that's the next thing that has to happen here so i'll get my corners in and i'll show you how we do that and then once the corners are installed then i'll uh i'll put my tie back on all right stay tuned folks okay folks so once we have this um this bottom flashing installed so here you can see it and i've you know i've done that all the way around and i explained to you how you know how i do this overlap thing to get the water away uh so the next thing we want to do is is install our corners and so here you can see i've installed one here okay and you know that's kind of what it looks like when it's done and so on uh, on the eave side we just go up to the bottom of the soffit and we just let it come down and we let it sit uh just down on this flashing here now the reason that there's a gap here is because the uh the, the flashing is sloped but you can see back there where the flange is it's uh you know sitting right down on the uh on the corner the inside corner there and so what I do before I install the corner is I put uh, a strip of tar paper up there. So I just take a piece of basically 18 inch uh, tar paper and I just fold it in half and you can see, you can see what I've done here. All right, so here I've actually got two pieces. Um, I've got an in outside and an inside corner here. So um, I've, I took this piece of uh, tar paper and folded it, stapled it on all the way up and then I did likewise for the inside corner. So now I've got tar paper coming out here and back overlapping over this piece. And then I just use some of that uh, sealing tape just to uh, seal the two pieces together. There's a joint in the tar paper right here. And uh, that's just basically for air infiltration that keeps helps to keep air out. Now a lot of people will just use, you can see here around the corner, I've uh, got a little bit of head here and I've got some of the, uh, the membrane on the house wrap and I'll, I'll show you that in uh, kind of in the next segment here but you know some people will just put that all on and wrap it around uh, I don't do it that way um, I do it like this with the tar paper and then I install my corner and then I let my uh, house wrap overlap over top of that tar paper flap which is like this one here okay so it'll flap it will overlap over here and then I seal them together there and uh it's just a thing that i need uh, that i like to do you can do it however you like doesn't matter but basically uh this is uh, this is what the corners are so this is an outside corner and you can see it's just you know it's just a big hollow piece of uh plastic basically is all it is and it's got these flanges on it that uh, that you nail and so this is where you nail it in to the house and uh, it goes back in here and when the siding goes on, the siding tucks into that so you don't see the raw edge of the siding. And so you just nail it, you know, it's slotted, you just nail, uh, you know, every 8 to 12 inches uh, all the way up. And it's a little bit tricky to uh, get those, you want to get your corners on straight. And so it's quite easy to get off on this because, because it's so floppy. Um, I mean, you can just see how this is, you know, everything is floppy here. And so, you know, you could get over here and then what happens is you, you know, you can stretch the corner. So you, you look at the bottom of the corner there, how it's stretched out there. So you, you want to be careful about getting that 
corner placed so uh, the way that I do it is I just take and make myself some reference marks so I don't know if you can see it there but uh, we've got one right there and then I do the same thing around the corner here I've got one here so in my case with the siding system that I'm using that mark is three inches and so I just mark that all the way up you know just go tick 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 all the way up and then what I do is I align this edge this this edge on that on that mark okay now that's going to vary from the system from system to system so uh, the siding I'm using here is uh, from Ab Abtco uh, and it's just a, you know just something that you pick up at Home Depot uh, it's nothing fancy parts are easily uh, uh, available to do it yourselfers uh, you get into some of the other systems and they they you know you got to go to a wholesaler to get it this stuff's available from Home Depot no problem uh, this this siding package is going to cost me about three thousand dollars for, for this one uh, that's Canadian Canadian pesos so um, the uh, and it makes it easy you know if you have to do a repair you just go down to Home Depot and get get it so so this corner, you know, again, going with my overlap thing, you can see now how I've, this, this piece that comes down the corner, you can see how I've overlapped it here, how it overlaps over that flashing, okay? So now any water that comes down here is gonna go down the paper and then out here. It's not gonna get in behind this flashing, all right? And uh, when we put the, the sheathing, uh, sorry, I keep calling it sheathing. When we put the house wrap on, now the house wrap, goes down over that flashing as well so the house wrap comes down over this flashing it comes down to this point and i'll show you that here in a bit um, and then this j trim down here which holds the bottom of the siding again this is a little bit different than you would normally do it because of the way i, I do this with this board and thing but then this goes over top of the house wrap so the house wrap is going down behind the j it goes down in behind there and so any water that comes down the house wrap will go down behind the J and it will exit out onto this flashing, okay? And then it drips off the edge here. And uh, any water that might get back in there, there shouldn't be any. But you know, before when we did the skirting, we put this, we put this piece of paper on and this piece of paper goes down right behind the skirting. So now uh, that whole rim joist is completely protected you know with this with this system so here you're getting a good look at it all right how it, how it works okay and uh, same thing on the inside corner so on the inside corner you can see how I've come down here like this okay um, you know again uh, here now again here the sheathing will come the the house wrap will come down over you know over this flange now and so any water will be directed out here all right do it this way uh, this combined with you know our overhang and eavesdrops that we're going to put on there you will never have any more rot rotten rim joists that problem is gone it's solved by doing it this way and this is uh, this is done the way you would do it like in a house like in a, a residential house like a normal stick belt house we are following the same techniques here as you would do you know in a, in a normal house and uh, which is a bit different you know than um, you know the way mobile homes manufactured homes are, are done it's done for production it's done fast uh, done cheap and yeah, whereas here you know we spend a little bit of extra time and money and stuff to get it done like a house all right so uh, we have an outside corner uh, this is the outside corner all right I'll show you that so that's what goes on the outside now up at the top there because of the you know the angle of our rake there which is here it's 412 it's 18 degree uh, I have to cut the top of that corner on an angle and, and that's a bit tricky uh, this whole thing that's this is the trickiest part is to get that that figured out um, and it's just um, I, I just don't know how to explain that to you but you just have to kind of figure it out and uh, uh, you know make it make it fit in there and it, that can be a bit tricky uh, likewise we have got an inside corner so this is the corner that we're going to use on the inside and you can see the shape of that all right and so that just sits in the inside corner here now uh, just like that okay so you can see how that works and so you know also when we get to the top there we have to 
you know, where it's going to go in kind of right there we have to have a, a, a cut an angle cut on the top of that as well which which I do I have it already here this is my inside piece and so again just like the outside corner you know you're going to want to line this up I'll be putting some reference marks you know in here for this so that we we don't get it you know over like this we want it sitting right there in the corner just nice and square uh, and it actually ends up this face is then 45 degrees and so this piece of siding uh, on this side will slip into this groove here and on this side will slip into this groove here it makes a nice finished job now there's different ways that you can do this you can also use two pieces of J trim back to back uh, but this with the system that I'm using this molding is available and so this is what I'm going to use here all right so I'm going to go ahead and nail those on and uh, then we'll bring you back for the next step all right, so we got those uh, corners all installed now. And uh, you can see how that's come together. Okay. Now, uh, when you nail these, uh, they have these nailing slots. And I'm just using inch and a quarter galvanized uh, roofing nails for this. You want something that's got a pretty good size head and you want something that's not gonna rust. Um, and when you nail it, you, they want you to nail it in the middle of the slot. And you don't nail it like tight, tight, tight. I nail it firm but not tight. Uh, the uh, it, uh, vinyl will expand and contract with the temperature. So, you know, I'm putting it on the temperature right now is, you know, it's kind of an average temperature. It's not hot, it's not cold. So, you know, when this uh, siding gets really cold, like if you're in a climate where you're like get minus 40, um, you know, it will actually shrink a little bit, it contracts. And so, you that's why you have the slots there so that it can contract and then if you, you're in a climate where you get like 100 degrees Fahrenheit or you know 35 degrees Celsius uh, you know then it will expand and so um, when you're cutting your pieces um, you know you want to size it a little bit short so uh, they suggest a quarter of an inch I think that's a bit much for my climate because uh, we don't have this big extreme of you know hot and cold um, so I just basically go about an eighth of an inch and then I nail it fairly firmly, you know, for these, these trim pieces. Um, but, you know, that's up to you. Uh, follow the, your manufacturer's instructors, instructions, you know, whatever system you're using. But generally, uh, a vinyl siding system is, is kind of a floating system. It's not nailed on tight to the wall like you, you do with a, uh, like a wood product or a, uh, like a hardy plank or something like that. So. You do have to allow a little bit of you know expansion contraction and so that's uh you know uh what these that's what these slots are for now when i nail it at the bottom i kind of nail it at the top of the slot here you can see where i nailed it at the top here and then i i go to the middle um go over here in the shade where it's a little bit better for you to see it so you can see it here where i've nailed at the top of the slot and then i, I kind of transition into the middle of the slot and so the idea is, is that I, it's not going to move down onto my flashing. Um, all movement in this siding that I've anchored it down here, it's going to go up and down and it'll be taken up up there. And I have a bit of a expansion joint up in there. So it's about a good, good eighth of an inch up there uh, where the corner meets the soffit up there. And uh, to allow for you know, expansion and contraction. Okay, so now that I have uh, the corners on, the next step is to put the uh, house wrap on. And so you can see here, I've gone down this side already and we have to prepare our windows. And so here you can see I've got a window that's finished and this is what it looks like when it's done. And so you can see this strip of black paper. You can see my house wrap doesn't go right up underneath here and I'll explain to you how that works over here on this window so keeping in mind you know this sort of this shingle thing that we're talking about how we layer and we layer from the bottom up so that you know water is constantly shedding over layers away from the building um, if we were to just run our our house wrap now on top of this you know when we installed our windows we uh, again we layered you know we started with a layer on the bottom and then we went up the sides so the sides overlap the the bottom 
okay and then at the top that top piece across overlaps the side so you know any water that gets in there is going to go you know it just keeps going down 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 right over top over top over top and so here if we put our uh, house wrap on top of this then our flap ends up underneath the house wrap so what we need to do is we just have to loosen this uh, tar paper here underneath the window and this is how I've prepped this and what we're gonna do now is the house wrap is gonna go up underneath this flap okay and then this flap is gonna pull down over top of the house wrap and that is gonna create our overlap there okay and and then we'll be taping all these seams and, and whatnot here and uh, that's how we get waterproof underneath the windows all right so again if you just go up here with your house wrap you know any water that comes off this window the window you know the window is designed so that water goes on the window it's going to come down you know off the window and then you know it's supposed to drip but it does sort of creep back a little bit and if it creeps back it's going to get in on the other side of that house wrap and it's going to be in between the building and the back of the house wrap so you, you don't want that to happen so the house wrap is going to tuck up underneath this we're going to put this over top the house wrap and the house wrap is going to go over top of all of this now okay and to create a uh, like a shingle that's going to put the water out like this all right so i'll go ahead and uh, get started with this all right so now you can see here how um this goes underneath okay so the the uh, the uh house wrap goes up underneath this flap now and so this flap comes over okay now this flap goes up underneath um, the, you know up underneath up to the window so it's underneath this board all right and then remember how we caulked it along this edge here when we installed that trim board so now this is all completely watertight right down any water that gets in there is going to come down going to come down come over this piece of paper onto the onto the house wrap and then here you can see how I'm overlapping that flashing on the bottom all right so you can see that how it's just overlapped all right and so that is going to any water then will come down and then comes out over top of this now that J trim that I have installed on the outside here okay it's just nailed on top of that bottom edge there Got a lot of bad light here today so you can see it here so this, uh, this J trim now is just nailed on top of that, right? Now, once I get this uh, all uh, stapled down, then I'll be sealing it with the sealing tape and then working my way up, all right? So I'm gonna finish this off and then I'll show you how I handle the top of the window. All right, so I've got this uh, finished up here now. I've got this all sealed with my tape and I'm up to the top of my window. So now the top of the window, I have to do something there to prepare for my uh, my house wrap and uh, the house wrap that I'm using folks is uh, is Tyvek okay um, there's a lot of things you can put on the outside of a, of a home I'm gonna go on the other side I went the light is better uh, you know you can old days we used to put tar paper on uh, the thing with tar paper is that it's kind of impermeable um, so it doesn't it just it blocks everything in, going in and out uh, the Tyvac is uh, is a brand name and so this is a it's like a plastic material it's made made by DuPont uh, now Tyvac is one of the first one of the first I think uh, house wraps that ever came out it Tyvac has been around for a long time but there's uh, you know a lot of variations of this type of product they're all good I've used several different brands on this particular one i'm using tyvek so uh tyvek's not necessarily my favorite it's just what i'm using here they're they're all good um but basically what this is um it, you know the thing with uh, tar paper is it was in uh 39 inch rolls basically so you put a roll on and then you put another layer another roll and overlap it and you know on a wall like this you'd have three rolls with two joints and so you know those joints are kind of uh, places you know for air to get through and uh, you know, the reason we, we seal this is mostly it's mostly about air infiltration it's keeping air out of the out of the inside of the home 
so we especially on these mobile homes i like to use uh you know some type of house wrap like this uh, like tyvek i don't like to use tar paper because tar paper tar paper doesn't breathe um and in these uh older mobile homes uh, you know unless you're going to completely tear all the drywall out and replace the vapor barrier in there the vapor barriers in these old homes are kind of leaky which means they allow uh, air to travel through them because of the, you know, they're not tight. Not like when you do a modern home now, it's very tight. Uh, back in, the, you know, this is a 1972, I think it is. And so, you know, it's like 40 years old. Technology has come a long way. Building science has come a long way in 40 years. And, uh, you know, we're not tearing all the drywall out of this one. We're going to just use the drywall that's inside, and that means the old vapor barrier is going to stay. So, what happens, uh, I'm going to explain a little bit of building science to you here now. Um, warm air always wants to move to toward the cold side. To, warm likes to go towards cold. So, in the winter time, that means that the warm air in your house is, is constantly trying to escape out to the cold air outside. In the summertime, it's the reverse. In the summertime, your, your, your hot air on the outside is trying to move into your cold air, if you're air conditioning, in, in the inside. So, it's always going from hot to cold. Now, where this becomes a problem is in the winter time. Okay, so in the winter time, we have warm moist air inside the home it's moist from bathing and cooking and just us breathing um, if you've ever spent a cold night in a tent you'll know how you get that condensation on the inside of the tent well basically you it's the same situation in, in, in a home so in the winter time you have that warm moist air trying to get out of the house and move towards the cold air outside so because these old vapor barriers in these old homes aren't aren't that tight they're leaky that warm moist air gets past the vapor barrier and we want to give it a place to get out uh, we don't want to have that trapped in the wall so what house wrap does is it's it, it allows that warm moist air to travel through it but it doesn't let air go this way so it's like a Gore-Tex jacket a Gore-Tex jacket if you sweat in a Gore-Tex jacket it lets that you know it lets that warm moist air out of your jacket but you can be out in the rain and it also keeps the rain out so this is basically how this works this is basically like a Gore a Gore-Tex jacket so it lets that warm moist air out okay and then it comes through the paper it ends up on the outside of the paper and then it will condense on the back of the siding so in this case we have vinyl siding so that vinyl siding is cold the warm moist air has traveled through condenses on the back and so now we've got to keep that that condensation from going getting back into the house or onto the wall and that and this is what our our uh, tyvek paper does our house wrap so the that any moisture that collects on the back of the siding from condensation will then come down the outside of the tyvek and shed off the bottom uh the flashing at the bottom so that so that's how that's how it works okay um a little bit of a tangent there but uh i want to explain that to you why we use tyvek if you were to use tar paper on a home like this then what happens is that condensation happens behind the tar paper and and then that's how you get mold and rot and stuff occurring in your walls and, and that's how it happens even if you don't have a leak it happens from that con condensation now, this little bit of tar paper on the outside is not a factor. Uh, outside of these windows, that that's, doesn't play into this at all. Um, that's just part of our window system. And so there's, you know, different ways that we could have done the windows as well with the flashing. You know, there's the self-adhesive membranes and all of that. Uh, you know, we're, we're not going that far. This is very, very tight here. Uh, we're, so we're not concerned about that. But what you have to be concerned about on your windows is keeping water off the top. So if you have rains, driving rains and stuff that gets, you know, drives the rain in there, we don't want that water going in on top of the window and then in behind the trim. And, the temp you know, it, it could possibly uh, then leak over the top of the window and go back into the house. So here, so we have to install a flashing, all right? Now here where we have the overhang, we're still going to have another, you know, about four inches coming on here with our gutter. 
we don't have to because the top of the windows you know the top of the door over there that it's all protected from the overhang there's i mean you'd have to be in a literally a hurricane where it's driving straight um to get the water back in there it's just not going to naturally end up in there uh, and i'm talking rain okay um but when we come around to the end okay so on the window at the end all right so now we have a space up above there so now there is enough space there that potentially we could get a driving rain and because the overhang is so tall up there that top of that window is not protected and we have the same situation on the other end uh, with that little bathroom window so if we just leave this okay go take you up here and show you how we have the top of the window all right so now you can see here's the top of our window now this tar paper that we put in here when we installed the window goes down behind this board okay and it, it comes over and it overlaps and goes down like that so we have this shedding going on but if we just left this like this now and just put our house wrap on here we have no protection for this little uh edge here it, water can get in there and then it could run back behind so what we have to do is we have to install a flashing and that's what this is and so i'm going to be nailing this on here now that you can see how that l-shaped thing there it just it just seals um, you know seals it right here so any water that gets in there now is going to get shed out over this all right so now we're going to nail this on here and our house wrap now will go over top of this and down to here and then if any water you know gets up in there uh, it's going to shed over top of this and out over the window okay so this is how this is going to look so that's the next uh the next thing here, I'm going to get this nailed on and then I'll go ahead and uh, put the rest of the house wrap on here. Okay, so uh, there we've got it all, uh, house wraps all on and sealed in and you can see how what we've done there. Okay, there that top piece, you know, comes out over top of that flashing that I showed you there in the previous segment. And so now, uh, the next thing is going to be uh, installing the J's. So, there's a lot of J's uh, involved um, with uh, vinyl siding, and it's a that's a really big component of it actually. But before I do the J, I'm going to. Uh, you can see we have the outlet for the light there, as well as one over here, and so we have to do something with that uh, to work our vinyl siding around it. And so what we do is we use these. Um, I don't know what you call them, fixture or something, but um, here's what the uh, plug looks like. You just buy these little things, and I'll show you one, the, what it looks like before it's installed, but um, you know, just basically, uh, that's this little thing. You know, this is an electrical outlet here, and so uh, we install this in there, and then now the uh, siding will tuck in behind this flange here, and uh, covers, you know, covers the edge. And likewise, we've got, uh, I guess they call them blocks. So likewise, we have uh, the same deal for the light. Now, this this is not part of the block, but uh, again, this, uh, you know, the siding will slip underneath there. This thing just snaps off, you know, for installing. And it gets nailed to the wall, and then I seal it over. I'll show you how that works. But uh, the reason I have this part of the lamp on there is uh you know thinking ahead here um to when i mount my fixture i want to make sure that everything's going to line up here and that my fixture is going to be in the middle of the block uh, otherwise it's just kind of a guess if you just kind of guess at it if you don't do this then you can end up having your fixture off center and uh you know we don't we don't want that so um but yeah i'll kind of show you this i'm going to do that next uh but that's how you handle the uh the things for the lights and the plug so that plug is installed and now now the light will be installed on top of this and uh yeah i've got my outside lamps uh, so they'll be going on right away uh, as soon as i get my siding on so i'm quite excited about that but yeah this siding this side here has got all the j's installed and uh you know this next segment i'll show you the j's but uh you know we have to install all these j moldings the siding tucks up underneath there sits down in there and i also have to put around the windows i haven't got around the windows yet so 
that's a lot of work it's a lot of fitting um, you know once you get all of this stuff on then we start uh, you know then we start nailing the siding on and uh, I'll just take it down here it goes pretty quick once you get all your trim and stuff on this is how the siding is going to sit into that J on the bottom all right so you can see it now normally uh, if you don't have the board and all this stuff then you use what's called a starter strip uh, but in this application, I'm not using a starter strip. And then you can see, uh, you know, getting back to the corners, you can see how the siding goes back in behind the corner there, and it makes a nice finished edge there. Okay, but that's uh, that's coming down a little bit later. Uh, you know, first we're going to finish off all my J's, and and so that when I can, when I start putting siding on, I can just fly at it, and it'll uh, it'll wrap up quite quickly here once I get to that point. Yeah, okay, so this is this uh, mounting block for the light, and so uh, I've got one piece of tape on here, but uh, you just nail it with the with the nails, the same as you nail everything else, and so that's on there firmly. And now I'm just going to tape around this uh, three sides uh, so that uh, it keeps any water that might come down here. Uh, the tape will keep it and shed it onto the box, and then I leave it open underneath here, so in case we get any water inside, it'll run out the bottom. And so, yeah, that's all there is to that, folks. All right, so I'm uh, moving right along here. And sort of got ahead of myself a little bit here. But um, before you do your siding, you know, once you've got your corners and everything installed, then, then the next thing is uh, you, there's a lot of J-trim that has to go on. So around each window, um, you have to put J-trim. And the, the J-trim... Um, gives you a place for your siding to tuck in behind uh, so you don't see the uh, the edge of the siding and so it, basically on your corners you sort of have the same idea here where the siding tucks in there and tucks in there so uh, folks this is not a siding tutorial per se uh, if I was going to show you everything here this would be hours long uh, you know all the little details but um, you, basically with the J trim you start at the bottom of your window and then you go up on two sides and then you put the top piece on now on this window here where we've got the uh, um, you know it's open up above it there's no protection there we have to put a flashing on so drip edge on that one um, around the corner uh, where the wind those top of the windows protected by the eaves we don't have to do that so but you can see around you know each window you know we've put all this J trim on and you know we had the J trim along the bottom uh, we did J trim along the top and there's there's a lot of J trim that has to be installed and then you uh, terminate up there with a piece of sill trim and uh, sill trim uh, you use sill trim on the bottom of your windows as well so this is the sill trim in there you can see it's sort of like a u-shaped thing and so your siding you know pokes up in there and that sort of it, it does two things it conceals the, the uh, cut edge of your of your siding and it also holds it um, it's basically the only thing that holds it all right so yeah it's a lot of work to get all the j trim on but you know once you get all your corners and the j trim and everything you can see this j trim up along the eave there as well um, you know then you're ready to start putting siding on so uh, like I say, I've kind of, you know, kind of got ahead of myself here. Um, you know, this is all done on this side. The other end is all done. So uh, I'm just going to finish it up now, and uh, then I'll bring you back to show you a little walk around the finished job here. And I'll just show you some of the tools that you that you know that I use. For, you know, it doesn't take a lot of tools to put vinyl siding on, but uh, you know, I do have my uh, utility knife, and you know, you use a little combination square that's handy. You know, a little bar like this is pretty handy to you know put the siding you know work it into places of course you've got the old av aviation shears here that we use um, uh, on this job i'm using my this little uh reciprocating saw uh it worked very well in some places for me um you know and this is a little tool here called a zip tool and this is handy for uh, helping to lock the siding in or unlock it if you need to. And then of course I've got my old snap lock, uh, you know, the snap punch, uh, snap lock punch, uh, which I've used. Um, 
and then you know inside again i'm just using my uh bench just you know to saw the uh, siding like i did before with my soffits and my skirting so you know this is my setup here and i've got my uh circular saw set up here with the uh blade in the back in backwards the teeth are facing back and so you know you've seen this before i just put my piece of siding in there and just cut it i'm also using my uh miter saw over here and again i've got the blade the teeth in backwards the blades blades backwards and so um i'm using this to cut my moldings and my trim uh another little tool that i use uh is this this thing here this is an expensive little tool and uh it's made by melco but this is uh this is a tool that's used for uh installing j trim and uh it it's got two stages but uh where you can make tabs uh again i'm not going to get into a full tutorial on on how to install vinyl siding it's uh very involved um but you don't need that one uh you can basically do it all with uh your 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 shears your tin snips your avi aviation shears uh this is a tool you don't really need and the weather's a bit colder and i'm finding uh yeah, this tool is not working so good for me because it's uh, causing problems when I'm cutting the siding. The siding's too brittle. All right, folks. So uh, I'll bring you back when it's all done here. Okay, folks. So we're going to wrap up this video here now. Uh, the siding's all done. And just in time. We got snow in the forecast for uh, later tonight. But, uh, yeah, this is the, uh, the finished job here. And I'm just going to give you a little walk around. So uh, you can see uh, I decided to go with the wall sconces. In a previous video, several back, I was debating whether to go with the recessed lights or uh, you know the wall sconces. And so just because of the way the wiring worked out, I ended up going with the uh, with the wall sconces to try and get the recessed light up on the eave. There would have been. Uh, a complete rewire of these exterior lights so I didn't want to do that um, yeah these lamps that uh, I went with these are all LED and uh, I bought them at Costco uh, you can also find one on Amazon um, it's it's a product made by Arctica I know people are gonna ask me about it and uh, yeah about $60 a piece at Costco um, What's important with these LED lights, folks, uh, since we're looking at them here, is the color. So um, the higher the number, the bluer and whiter the, the light is. So you can see this is a nice kind of a warm glow. And so these are 3200K. If you go to uh, like a 5000 or 6000K, then you start to get into that really intense white blue light. So this is a more of a warmer light. So uh, 3200 is the color. Is the, uh, is the color temp light temperature that I like to use all right so I'm just gonna walk you around here show you this how this all came together yeah this was a big job it was a big puzzle a lot of pieces to put together here um, now you can see how uh, how we're when we're finished here you know before we were having trouble with a lot of rot in this uh, rim joist here and uh, i show you how i fixed all that and you know that rot was due to uh, water running off the roof and then down in behind the old tin siding the old roof didn't have the overhang on it so now with the overhang and we're gonna have eaves troughs and now you can see how you know with the siding coming down over top of this uh, drip edge which goes over top of our uh, this board here our trim board you know any water that comes down the wall now is going to be directed out and over so We'll have no more problems with wet walls in there. Uh, no more rot. Uh, that's a thing of the past. So, you know, this just takes it up to like a residential style, uh, like in a regular home. Okay. Now, um, the vinyl siding is finished, folks, but I'm still not finished with the outside. So there's still things to do yet. Uh, we're still going to be putting eaves troughs on. Uh, they're going to be black, and then we're going to have the black downpipe, uh, downpipes. And um, 
our railing is going to get stained and it's going to have a black railing on it to sort of bring all the little black accents together here um, going to be introducing a new color uh, that's you know just the raw wood there so far uh, I won't be won't be painting that anymore this year now I mean we're, we're into November here now and so uh, it's too cold besides I like to do uh, you know if I'm gonna stain decks I like to do it just before I get ready to sell it so everything's nice and fresh and clean when I put it for sale but yeah we're gonna be getting uh, another color so you can see our colors you know we've got the gray and the white and the black going here and there's gonna be one more color coming in and uh, I'm also gonna be doing something uh, here with uh, I'm gonna be doing some wood trim here yet so we're not finished with the outside uh, I think I'm gonna get the wood trim I'll, it's kind of I think that's gonna be my next project because I can uh, pre-paint the pieces that I'm gonna fabricate uh, inside and then bring them out and install them so uh, you know I'll go ahead with that railings I'm not sure if I'll do that I may might wait till spring uh, I'm looking forward to getting going on the inside now so uh, you know I'm where I wanted to be now for before our bad weather comes you know we got new roof new siding new windows the skirting's done so we're in, we're in good shape here uh, but yeah there is going to be some wood accents that I'm going to uh, be installing here that are going to sort of warm it up a little bit I mean you can see we've got the wood trim on the windows but uh, I want to take that up just a, just another level here with some wood trim and uh, introduce a uh, fourth color so uh, that's coming um, you know the railings we'll see how the weather I may or may not get into that eve troughs uh, got a call out um, you know with to a guy to come give me a coat but uh, you know they install from the top so if we start getting snow up there they're gonna they're not gonna want to do it so that may have to wait till spring as well so it's November here and you we still got lots of leaves on the trees it's it's a weird year this year you know we had a late spring and and uh, you know it's uh, I mean just look at the look at the trees over there we still got lots of Lots of leaves. Uh, normally, but now the leaves will be all down. All right, and here's the back end uh, with our little ensuite window there. And coming around the corner here, uh, something else I need to do yet is build my step here. Um, I didn't build my step. I haven't built it yet because I wanted to leave this open be able to pull those panels out to give access for uh, when we install the uh, HVAC system and uh, the HVAC system is uh, is installed we got that done so uh, there'll be another video on that to show you what we did how we handled that this time but uh, you know now that this work is done uh, if I wouldn't have left this open he would have had to crawl like way from the other side underneath the other deck and underneath and so I left I left this open, but uh, yeah, again, this is probably going to be a spring job. Uh, here's our new air conditioner condenser, and I've just got a thing on it to keep uh, all these berries that are falling off of this uh, mountain ash tree here, um, and also just to keep the snow out of it. But yep, this is how it's come together here, folks. Okay, you can see how our lights mounted on that. Uh, you know, on those boxes, the little light uh, things that we installed there. And, you know, there's the finished uh, electrical outlet. Um, and installed uh, hose bibs as well. So here's a little tip on these hose bibs. Now you'll see hose bibs handled a, a lot of different ways. Um, now, I've seen them put, try to put them in the electrical boxes. What happens with that is that uh, it gets really tight in here to put the uh, you know to, to spin the uh, the hose on and so if you like if you set it back in so I set it up on top and you can see this is solid it's solid here and this is screwed right on and it's mounted right in there if you come up you can see how it pushes right so this final siding final siding is hollow in between in behind I mean and so I've seen some places where you know people will just take this and screw this on and they just suck the siding in right and so then you get a big bulge in there where the siding is uh been smushed um but this way here what i do is uh i install a piece of half inch plywood in behind here 
So there's just a, a little block that just fits in between the space here. And I just screw that to the wall first. And then I put my siding on top of that. And so that way, you know, I got a good solid place to mount my, uh, my hose bib. So that's a little tip for you. You don't have to spend the money on buying, you know, buying that thing that uh, they have to put those. So yeah, the uh, the wood trim that I'm going to put on, the little wood accents, I should say, are going to be uh, all around the house here. I'm not going to say what it is. If you think, want to give us a guess, uh, let us know in the comments uh, what you think I'm going to be doing here. And also, in the comments, let me know, what do you think of my wall sconces? Uh, you know, as opposed to, you know, recessed light, a lamp. Recessed light would have gone up there in the soffit. But, uh, you know, what do you think of, what do you think of these wall sconces? Let me know in the comments. Alright folks, so, yeah, that just about ties her up now for, you know, for uh, this season. And like I say, um, you know, I want to, I want to get inside now and uh, you know last winter I took last winter off because I just wasn't at a place really where I could keep going on the inside but I am now and so the videos are going to keep coming and I'm going to keep working um, I am going to take a little bit of time off uh, uh, to catch up on, on some yard work at home uh, where I live and I live on a half acre so uh, I've got quite a bit of yard work to do there to get ready for winter so I'm going to take a little bit of time to do that but then I'm going to be right back here and uh, like I said I think the next project is going to be uh, working on these wood accents I can fabricate them inside where it's nice and warm um, and uh, you know I can uh, do the stain on them but uh, yeah I just uh, just want to do something to uh, introduce a little bit of natural wood to the exterior of the home in addition to what we have here with the decks already. So uh, yeah, I'm kind of excited about that. Um, and then once we get done with that, it's gonna be into, uh, you know, the plumbing work inside there, getting the hot water tank installed and just uh, gonna keep gonna keep trucking here. My uh, goal is to have this uh, home for sale, ready for sale by uh, the May long weekend coming up in uh, 2023. So that's kind of my schedule. Um, you know, it's uh, schedule has been kind of uh, hard to follow because of all of the issues that we've been having here over the summer with the uh, supply chain issues and all of the stuff that's just crazy with this, what the pandemic has caused us. But uh, I'm at a point now where I can kind of go for a while now and I don't have to worry about any of that because it's just mainly labor, uh, not a lot of material. Uh, you know, the roofing and siding and all that stuff was very material uh, intensive so uh, you know it, I needed the material to do the work so um, this siding job uh, cost uh, I haven't added it up so talking you know speaking about m m uh, supply chain issues I had to get you know this is not a big job uh, this siding job was not a big job as far as volume goes it's a small building I had to go to three places to get my siding and all the parts for it and uh and i actually had to travel to one of those sources was outside of my my town i had my city i had to go to another city to actually get it and so yeah it was just it was crazy i had to wait a little bit uh, in between times uh you know i didn't wasn't able to get my whole package rate at the beginning but uh materials on this i haven't added up uh, i gotta go through my receipts but you know, this little job cost me about $2,000 in materials, uh, and that's Canadian dollars. Uh, for you folks in the United States that are thinking about doing something like this, uh, uh, you know, $2,000 Canadian is about, uh, what, $1,400, $1,500 American is what my material costs were. And, you know, of course, I did the labor myself, and uh, ar around here, basically, you know, a job like siding and roofing and things like that, uh, your labor, if you're going to hire it done, your labor is as much as your materials are. So, uh, if I had hired this done, um, you know, it would uh, would have cost me, you know, about four thousand, forty-five hundred bucks, something like that, Canadian. 
and uh, but doing it myself, you know, I saved that money, and it's pretty good money, you know. It's uh, it took me about a week to do the actual siding part. You know, once I got rolling on it, um, well, it took a little bit longer than that because I had, you know, I had to run around and get materials. But if I had everything and could just go ahead and do this start to finish, the siding would take me about a week. So, you know, two thousand bucks uh, for a week works weeks worth of work um, is pretty good. And uh, and you know, the uh, it's not a it's not a hard job to do. It's kind of technical. Like I say, it's a big puzzle. There's a lot of pieces that you have to put together. But you know, if you sort of, uh, if you can have attention to detail, um, you know, it's not that hard to do. You don't need a lot of tools. Definitely not a lot of tools. Uh, nothing fancy. Nothing expensive. Um, but just, uh, yeah, there's uh, some little techniques. And like I say, folks, you know, I just wanted to kind of show you how this all came together here. Uh, like to actually do a, you know, show it, all the little things that you have to know for. Uh, to install it vinyl siding um, it would be like hours long hours and hours long video so lots of good resources if this is something you think you want to do uh, yourself definitely you could do it you know just 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 go online and and, and you, there's lots of guys that know how to install uh, vinyl siding um, the home improvement guy there uh, house improvement I think it's called uh, he's on my uh, videos list that uh, he's a channel that I recommend he's really good at uh, you know that tutorial kind of thing I just kind of want to show you how the process is and kind of how it goes from start to finish uh, so that if you uh, think you want to do it yourself it kind of gives you an idea of how it, how the work flows and if you're gonna hire somebody else kind of gives you a little guide on uh, what to look for and how to keep track of them and how you know how they're doing doing the job okay folks well uh, that's it for this one uh, thanks for watching uh, we'll catch you on the next one bye bye